bless and exalt you for your word, Father. We thank you right now for the promise that you've made. And we ask you right now to note this word for your Lord. Release the strolls, the mysteries, and the revelations of this word to these our people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, and for his name's sake, we decree and declare. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. We find in this particular passage of scripture that God speaks to his servants, and he makes his servants a promise. And the promise that he makes his servant, he lets them know that I don't care what's going on around you, I'm with you. Amen. He lets them know that I don't care what you're facing, I'm with you. Amen. He lets the servants know that it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, Amen. I'm with you. Doesn't matter who the enemy is that runs up against you, I'm with you. And he says to the nations tonight to know that I'm with you, I'm leading you, I'm guiding you, I'm altering your steps for my purpose and for my will, says the Lord. It is important tonight, saints, that we understand that God has a plan for each and every one of us. And inside that plan, he made a promise. And it's up to us to, to walk the straight and narrow until we get to the place of promise. Does that make sense tonight? In order for us to fulfill what God has ordained our lives to, we've got to die into who we are so we can truly become who we are in Christ. Does that make sense? It's important tonight that we realize and understand that God in this hour and in this season is doing a new thing. And inside the thing that he's doing, he's pioneering and he's turning the church into a new destiny, into a new plan of his will and his purpose. It's important that we realize tonight that God is releasing a new authority and a new anointing to shift the atmosphere for the things that's about to manifest where his kingdom is concerned. Many, many things are happening in the nation right now. Nations inside the nations are rising against one another. Fighting is going on in the nations that's never before. But God releases a word to let every nation know that I'm with you. And he speaks to Israel, and he lets Israel know, I'm with you. So it doesn't matter about what's going on around the world, but it's important that you are aware of what's going on around the world. Because the word, the word says, there'll be wars, and there'll be what? Rumors of wars. So God wants us to understand that although these things are going on, these are things that are just before my end. These are the things that are going to take place just before I return. So what we're seeing going on in the Ukraine is just things that God has already said is going to happen, is going to take place. It's just things that God has already said. Nations are going to rise against nations. And that's what's going on over the Ukraine. They're just battling with one another. But God still has victory. But we've got to keep our face and our focus on the things of the kingdom. And to the nation I see tonight, it is time to take your place in the anointing. It is time to stand and do that thing that God has ordained and called his church to. Who is the church? We are the church. We're the chosen vessels. We're the chosen seed of the King of King and the Lord of Lords. It is time for us to arise up to the authorities, rise up to that place. It is appointed, it's appointed right now, and there's an anointing that's being released right now, that there'll be no more big eyes in the beginnings. But God has empowered all of his children with the anointing to release fire and the fire will slay. To release fire and the fire will heal. To release fire and his fire or cause all kind of sickness and all kind of diseases to be cured. He's releasing an authority in the atmosphere now that's going to shift us to where we're empowered just because we're his children. We're empowered just because it's his promise. And you see where I'm going in just a minute. I'm just laying this the groundwork right now. But see, God has a plan. He has a purpose for the body of Christ. And we have to be willing and ready to receive where he's carrying us. That's why he's releasing a new anointing. That's why he's shifting the atmosphere. Yes, there is a shifting taking place in the atmosphere. And as an apostle, it is our, it is our job and our responsibility to know when God is changing again. To know when God is moving again. To know when God is birthing something new again. And what he's doing right now is he's beginning to birth something new in the earth. So don't get left behind. And then walls. Don't get left out in this season as God begins to take the church and carry it to another plateau in his anointing. Carry it to another platform in his authority. A realm and a dominion that many would desire to walk in. God is allowing us to be able to tap into that source because we choose to be connected to him. Because we choose to know him in a greater realm, in a greater aspect. Because we choose to know him in a way we've never known him before. We're not just doing ordinary church, but we're seeking to know kingdom and the authority of kingdom. And as a result of that, God says, okay, I will allow you to come into that place that many others can't get into. That's why I break the veil. Because it's been what? It's been removed. In other words, God says, I'm allowing you to walk in a place in me that many desire to walk in. But as you walk in that place, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to shield you. I'm going to watch over you. Because the enemy is going to rise his head. The enemy is 
you understand that problem. But as believers, we've got to understand and realize that God has a purpose and a plan, and no devil in hell can stop when he's carrying the right turn. I'm still talking about the promise. No demon can stop what God is getting ready to do in this season. In other words, the time for the enemy is almost up. In time, the time for the enemy battling in your life is almost up. Now, I didn't say you wasn't going to go through anything. I didn't say you ain't going to go through some suffering. Because there's suffering with the anointing. There's some things you have to go through as God empowering you, as God equip you, as he prepare you for the next plateau in the things of his kingdom. There's some things you got to go through to get ready. In other words, he says, whom I call, I also qualify. So there's a qualifying period. There's a qualifying process that we, what, have to go through. Look at verse number 8 in Isaiah 41. But thou, Israel, art my servant. God lets us know, look, church, you are my servant. You belong to me. I have authority to tell you what to do because you are hired full time for my kingdom. You are hired full time for my purpose. You are hired for my will. So when God says to the nations, he says, look, church, I have ordained you for my will. You are my servant. So catch this now. That means you're not working for yourself, but you're working for me. That means I didn't ordain you to do what you want to do, but I ordained you for my purpose and I ordained you for my will. That's what he says to the church. That's what he's telling Israel. He says, let me tell you something, people. You've been ordained for my will. In other words, before you knew flesh, I had a will. I had a purpose. I had a plan for your life. So he says, you're my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. Then he makes it personal. He said, not only are you my servant, but I picked you. Out of all, many are called, but few are chosen. There are many ministries, there are many holy churches, but very few of them are seeking to know the purpose. Very few of them are seeking to know destiny where the kingdom of God is concerned. They're not concerned about understanding that all of us, as I said earlier this morning, we're just pilgrims passing through the land. But it's our job and our responsibility to know where it is that God is carrying the body of Christ. Does that make sense? Amen? So he, he lets Jacob know, he says, you're my chosen. In other words, I, I, I had a bunch over here, and I just decided out of that bunch that I'm just going to pick you. You come with me. Remember the story of Jesse? Jesse, Jesse had a son, I believe it is. And say so he had a son, he had all these sons. And when time comes to anoint one king, God didn't pick all of them. Now, 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 thank you, mind you, Jesse had the one he wanted to be picked. But God didn't pick that one. He picked the one that he had anointed in the kingdom for the purpose to fulfill the kingdomship. And as a child, he anointed David. He chose David. So see, he chose one out of all the children. And I don't want to say the one. I think it was seven of them, but I'm not sure. But he chose one out of all his sons. He chose one. Don't you know you're blessed? Because out of all the saints, he chose you to empower you. He chose you to equip you. He chose you to anoint you for purpose and destiny. He chose you to, to be able to walk in rams and dominions that many desire to walk in, but you've got the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Walls. Amen. You have the chance to tap into a source in God that many desire to tap into. Yeah. That many seek to tap into. Oh. Because they, 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 they think they have it, and I'll talk about that in a minute in here. They think they're already there, but there's a realm in God that you got to be meek to walk in. you got to be lowly to walk in. you got to be humble to walk in this realm. When in other words, and all that Jesus went through, he remained humble. Catch this. He remained the example. He remained everything that he wanted us to remain. He showed the apostles and the disciples how it should be done. Although your flesh rise up, you got to remain humble. You gotta remain base. You gotta remain meek. All those things get to the place where you where the hell stand up on the back of your neck. You still gotta remain humble. Yeah. Sometimes we as leaders, we get to the place where we say, Lord, I'm too all I'm taking it out. I'm tired of these devils now. But the key is this. We still gotta what? We gotta love them unconditionally and we still gotta remain faithful. Yeah, and God is saying to the church, I he's speaking to the hollow church as well as the, the chosen. Yeah, and he's telling the hollow church, you've been pretending. You've been playing games, but now I'm about to show you who I'm really with. 
I'm about to show you who I'm really chosen. I'm about to show you who I'm really anointed. That's what he's saying in here. Now catch this in the next part of that verse. He says, now, I have you, I have to whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Notice what God says. He says, you're the seed of Abraham. So see, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you become the seed of Abraham. Remember the word from God promised Abraham? He would have many children. And his seed would come as a result of his obedience to God and doing what God promised him to do. Although he didn't live to see the manifestation, God allowed the manifestation to come into existence. And every time one accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they become of the seed of Abraham, of the children of Abraham. Amen. Amen. So God doesn't know Abraham was not a friend. It's something when God called you free. It's something when the Lord said, you're my friend. Jesus, Jesus says, I'm a friend that's thinking closer than a brother. In other words, he wants to know, even though apostle might not understand your behavior right now, I'm still your friend. Even, even though Bishop might not understand the way you're thinking right now, I'm still your friend. Why? Because it's important you realize that when you feel like you're all by yourself, Jesus is right there with you. He said, I'll never leave you, No, will I ever forsake you. Amen. Oh. Look at the next verse, too. Verse number 9 in Isaiah 41. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from the chief men thereof. Now, then I got to say, wait a minute. You were with the ones who thought they were somebody. Uh-huh. You were with the wind ones uh, that are allowed to travel here and to travel there. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you the word verbatim based upon the word you see on the page, but I'm giving you the word verbatim based upon the revelation in the word. Amen. 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 So you say, well, Apostle, I don't see. No, I'm giving you the revelation inside of what God is saying here. So he said, I am allowed to go from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, those men. And I told you out of the chief. In other words, those that were on the mountain top, those who were in high position, those who were up there real high, I, I told you. I picked you. I, I, I decided that I, I don't really need them. I need you because you ain't nobody. You ain't nothing. I, it's easier to do something with nothing than it is with somebody. Uh, can you give me a good example? Take a kid or, 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 or an adult that, that learned how to play piano by ear. The saying is, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. You ever heard that saying? In other words, when you have been trained to do something one way, uh-huh. it's hard to break the way you do it. Amen. Because you're accustomed to it. But now when the time comes to change and to grow, what happens is you're stubborn. You're used to doing it the old way, so although you're being trained the new way, that's what you devil back to. You devil back to the old way. We had a young lady that used to work with us, but I won't call by name. But they got a new supervisor in their department. And when the new supervisor came in, every time the new supervisor would tell the employees how to do things, she would say, I know that's right, but this is the way we used to do it. So when the supervisor wasn't around, she told them to do it the way they used to do it. See, that's how some saints so. are. That's how some of us are. We don't like change. When change comes, we bump against change. We fight change and stand change. But change is good. Because with change, you come wisdom. With change comes knowledge. With change comes revelation. Many people bump change, they fight it. And she kept fighting change and fighting change and bumping change and the supervisor dealt with it for about two years. And one day she called in the office and said, you fired. What did she do? She built a list of things that she had done against them. And then she went down the list, one behind the other one. See, when God gets ready to get rid of you, he has a list already prepared. In other words, I, I, I told you to do it this way, but you chose to do it your way. I told you to move to the left, but you chose to move to the right. And, and, and in the past scripture, many victories were won by the men of God because they did it the way God told them to. They did it exactly the way God said do it. Not according to how men and other women instructed them, but God gave them specific instructions and they had to do it the same way. Amen? Amen. Look at this. He says, from one earth to the other. Then he says in the next verse, and said unto thee, thou art my servant, and I have chosen thee, 
and cast thee away. God said, wait a minute, you my servant, I told you, and then I separated you. See that there? Cast you away? I, 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 I had something else in mind. So I, although you were in the midst of the crowd, I couldn't let your heart get infected. Although you were sitting in the church with all the rest of them, I had chosen you for a particular purpose, so I couldn't allow you to be a part of what they were doing. Although you were in the number, you weren't with the number. Although you, although you sat in the church for 10, 15, 20 years and you couldn't understand why you were so different, it wasn't that you were so different, it was that you were real. In other words, God said, I put my hands on you. I remember a pastor stood me up when I was a little boy in his church. He said, God said he put your hand, he put his hands on you when you were five years old. And from the age of five until this day, all I know is God. See, there's a time, there's a place in God where God elevates you, where God raises you. And as God elevates you, and as he raises you, he brings about a shift in who you are. He changes you from day to day. He elevates there's no way you can serve God and remain the same every day. You've got to grow. Amen. I mean, I've been serving for years and I'm still growing. Amen. And Lord, please don't stop growing me. Because I'm loving it. As a, as a commercial say, I'm just loving it. In other words, there's nothing like God elevating you. Because when God elevates you, He gets all the glory. Amen. Never, never, never. I say it all the time. Never, never, never take His glory. Amen. But this promise, God is getting ready to release. Now, He's reminding them where I brought you from. He's reminding them that I've been with you all this time. But the reason I've been with you all this time is because I told you. Amen. See, when God personally picked you, he has an obligation to take care of you. Amen. Remember, he's your father. Now, we know we got some fathers that are not true fathers. They're actually dads. But God's our father. He makes sure we're taken care of. He makes sure our needs are provided. He makes sure whatever we need, we have it. That's the kind of daddy you want. One is there 24 7, sun up, sun down. Now, look at verse number 10. He says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For what? I am thou what? God. He says, First of all, don't you worry about anything. Fear. Now, that fear, he says right there, is not the reverence and respect fear. That's the fear he said, I don't care what they say, don't worry about what they say they're going to do to you. That's the fear he's talking about there. Fear not. Because I'm with you. In other words, whatever the devil in hell himself is planning, I'm already with you. You ain't got to worry about it because I promised that when I anointed you that I was going to make sure the enemy couldn't stop what you were doing. When God called us to purpose and destiny, he makes sure the enemy can't stop it. Now, that means he ain't going to get in the way. It doesn't mean you're not going to get off track. But there comes a time and a season where you're going to line back.